Neptune has 40 confirmed moons. Out of them, one is Triton, and it is one of the most interesting ones in the solar system. It is also pretty big, it is larger than Pluto. But beside Triton, which gets a good amount of attention, there is also a less known one. It is the second largest moon of Neptune, that is Proteus. And it is worth taking a look at it and seeing what would it be like to stand on this forgotten moon. But first, let's take a look at its size and shape. So this moon has a diameter of 420 kilometers, which is a bit more than Saturn's moon Mimas. But it is also more massive than Mimas and has a stronger gravity. But oddly enough, it is still not round, while Mimas is. This is a bit weird. The surface area of Proteus is 500,000 kilometers square, which is very similar to the surface area of Spain. So what would it be like to stand on this moon? From space, as you would approach this dim dot, it would be more clear that you are looking at an oddly shaped moon. Landing and stepping onto the surface of this giant rock, the ground would feel and seem very rocky and icy. Also, it would be immediately noticeable that you would feel extremely light on this moon, as its gravity is 140 times weaker than the Earth's gravity, so you would be 140 times lighter. Because of that, you would be in ability to jump many meters up, and moving around would be quite easy and fast. Looking into the distance, you would see a very deformed and cratered surface, with many ridges and rocks. It would be also very dark, especially the shadows. They would all be pitch black, and the whole moon would seem very dim, and that's because the moon is 30 times more further away from the sun than the Earth is. This also means that the surface temperature on this moon is minus 220 Celsius. But your spacesuit should protect you from this harsh environment. You would also be able to come across the largest crater on the moon, which is called Pharos, and it is the only named feature on the whole moon. This crater is 240 kilometers in diameter, which is more than half the radius of the whole moon. If you were to go down the crater, it would take you many, many hours to do so, as the crater is between 10 and 15 kilometers deep. So as you would look down from the crater at the ridge that you went down from, it would appear enormous, as it would be like looking at something double the height of Mount Everest, which is the tallest mountain on Earth. This shows you how gigantic this crater is. As you would look into the distance, you would see in the middle of the crater a dome that would be a few kilometers high as well. It would all appear very grandiose and amazing. But as you would move around this whole moon, it would all seem smaller than it is because you would be moving around so easily and fast because you would be 140 times lighter on this moon than on the Earth. Moving around, you would also find yourself on the edge of many cliffs and valleys. Looking up into the sky, if you were in the right place, you would see Neptune. It would appear gigantic as Proteus orbits the planet at a distance of 90,000 kilometers, which is more than four times closer than the distance between the moon and the Earth. Also, in Neptune, you can fit 58 Earths. So you can only imagine how enormous would this planet appear to be. From Proteus, you would be also able to see many other smaller moons. And you could see Triton, the largest moon of Neptune. Overall, that's pretty much how it would be like to stand on this moon. It would be unusual, but you would also come across many same things, and it would all repeat. But that doesn't mean that we should not study this moon. Who knows what will we find if we study it more.